rolling up in near darkness last night. <laughs> Didn't know, realize the railway track was so close. Well, it's not that bad, one train every half an hour or so. And there's a golf course opposite. That's given us great entertainment while we're having lunch at the table, watching them uh, teeing off at, I think it's number five hole. What are you doing, Fran? I'm just checking for signs of spring. It's too early, I know, but we planted, layer planted or lasagna planted, I think they call it, bulbs in here, tulips at the bottom, daffodils, snowdrops and crocuses, and it's all beginning to happen. Little bulbs coming up. Uh, the parsley is beginning to shoot. We've got snowdrops. The chives are beginning to shoot. And I don't know what that is. I think it's a giant snowdrop. I don't know. But it's lovely. Lovely to see. I'm happy. And the roof needs cleaning, Rich. Uh. So we stoked up the fire before we left. And Fran's put the bread in the oven on top of the fire. <laughs> So when we get back, we'll have a, how many loaves have you done? Oh, they're only tiny ones because the oven on the fire is not big. Um, but a lock keeper last year or the year before gave us two tiny little loaf tins. Oh yeah. And they're perfect for the um, oven. So I make two tiny loaves each time I bake. It's cooking for free because the fire's on anyway. And um, we're trying to cut down on the bread a little bit. So smaller loaves are better, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, what's but, yeah. for lunch anyway? Um, well, I'm not sure yet. <laughs> to be decided. I've got leftover pasta from last night. Yeah, I think. I think I'm having lentil soup, which you're not so keen on, but I could live on lentil soup. Well, so I'm cheap to keep me. But uh, this is a lovely walk, and um, I, I turned the camera on initially to get the sound of the bird song, but uh, sod's law, again, <laughs> they've stopped as soon as I put the camera on. It's just nice to get off the canal quite often, whether it's up to a village or a little bit of woodland like this. And of course, this time of year, I'm keen to start looking out for things that are edible. I haven't found anything yet, but... Two, two dogs Rich, there. Rich is keen on walking quickly. I'm keen on looking all around me, yeah. so we keep separating, but uh, it's all good. Right, onwards and upwards. <laughs> I've just realised what you said, what, eat the dogs? <laughs> opportunity the dogs are just jumping into the canal they're stupid aren't they it's like three degrees out here I'll be quiet and we've ended up here Kirtlington quarry which is a disused quarry from the 1920s and apparently it's a, been a really good site for finding fossils so Franz had us come back down as she's read the sign and our budding paleontologist is uh, searching for fossils and any luck Fran? No, a snail, I found a snail <laughs> <laughs> I think we could be here a while so no new species named after you then? No. Franosaurus. <laughs> <laughs> or I thought I saw us. I thought I saw a Franosaurus.
spent six days at that last place we just had a nice chill relax and uh, did a lot of walking but uh, now we need to fill up with water so we're heading to a village called Lower Hayford uh, we've got something like four four or five miles to do and uh, three locks and it is absolutely gorgeous out here it's just like a spring day really heavy frost last night but uh, it's all thawed out uh, turn into a gorgeous day and it's uh, really mild well I say really mild it's probably about five degrees where it feels really warm the sun's got some warmth to it now so yeah having a lovely cruise Fran's gone downstairs to get us a bowl of soup and uh, yeah really loving it Well, that was a real tough gate for Fran. That's her third attempt to get it closed. She didn't want to get her backside behind it because it was forcing her back towards the lock. But uh, I think she's got it now. Well, I've had to get off the boat. Fran can't close the gate. There's something jamming it down there by the looks of it. So uh, we'll open the gate again and see if it will go through. There's lots of debris in the lock. We just cannot get the gate to close. So Rich is going to climb back on the boat, reverse out of the lock, hopefully dislodge whatever it is that's stuck in there and um, and try again. Wasn't expecting this at the end of her journey. There's my hero. So that seemed to do it. The lock is closed and this is the offending article which was stopping the gate from closing. So, on we go. shown you inside the boat for a little while and we just thought we'd show you some of the things that we've been buying or doing to cozy it up over the winter and there's a few things that I really really love. One of the first things that we bought on the boat was this beautiful beautiful pot um, which was made by one of our viewers handmade and she's in Georgia um, and it is Robin's Nest Pottery. You can find her on Instagram and I think we'll put a link down below to her. But she made this bespoke for us and matched it to the colour of the boat. And look inside, we've even got little hearts inside, patterns on the bottom. It's really too good to be a utensil holder, but we showed her a picture of the spot where we wanted it and that's what she made. So that's gorgeous. This is one of my favourite buys, a little mini rolling pin, which actually cost me 50 pence at an Asian shop in Leicester. 
I think it is my favourite thing on the boat. <laughs> Don't ask why, but I love it. Um, and these spoons were made by Can Kay's Canal Craft. And she paints them on her boat. Um, she also did the teapot for us and a few other things that I'll show you. But I love them. Um, we go up here. This is, this another... is my favourite thing, Fran. Look oh, at this, yeah. folks. Secret Whoa, drawers. They're secret not secret drawers. any longer. No. <laughs> <laughs> This is yours as well. Oh yeah, a little um, magazine rack from Futon Shop. What do you think, Archie? And a dog. <laughs> <laughs> now you've shown me posh slippers off again, haven't you? You're not supposed to be doing that. We're in editing mode over there at the moment, so it looks a bit messy. <laughs> and this is another thing that Kay did for us from Kay's Canal Craft. And this was my dad's uh, railway lamp from when he was a steam train driver. It's a signalling lamp. And it was rusty and stuck and rotten and Kay cleaned it up completely, painted it in traditional canal art and even painted my dad's name and dates of birth on the, on the bottom on where he, was, where he was based. And it's just a perfect combination of train and canal, which I think they go together. And I absolutely love it. New weaving on the go, Fran. Oh, I know. This is um, being a bit experimental here. So the warp is wider and the threads are spaced wider than I've ever done um, and I'm making a shawl and I'm absolutely loving it it might not make it to the shop because I might keep it to wrap <laughs> up just those cold nights on the boat but we'll see yeah there will be more going in the shop um, and you know I love my plants so two lovely viewers sent us some macrame baskets some macrame hangers so that plant is nearly dead. Don't show my dead plant. <laughs> <laughs> this one's much nicer, but um, thank you to the people that sent us these. Look at that, even the little dragonfly on it. And while we're over here, another piece of Canae's, Cal's, Canae's, Canae's <laughs> Canal, Kay's Canal Crafts with our lovely boat name on it. And where did that come from, Rich? Well, the horseshoe came from our cousin's farm in Australia. So that's a lovely memento to have, isn't it? We've had that for four years, I yeah. think now, five years, and uh, it's just sat there not doing anything. So um, that's containing all our luck, that horseshoe. Um, and the last little thing, which was a bit of a lucky find, and this was in a boatyard. We just saw it sitting on the shelf, and we wanted something actually for the back of the boat to put our feet on when we're sitting as a passenger, not driving. But we just saw this in the boatyard, and unfortunately, the man that made it has since died. Um, but this was there for thirty pound. Look at the work that's gone into that. So it's a little footstool or a little tea, coffee table, whatever. Yes, but, it's, yeah. it's a it's a table for our lamp at a the lamp moment, table isn't it? Yeah. At the moment. But yeah, in the summer, that's going to be on the back for us to sit and put our feet on. But yeah, so that's just a few of the little bits and pieces that we've bought or been given just to cosy the boat up and I think we're getting there we've still got a few things to get for the bathroom and some shelves and bits and pieces but it's an ongoing project and I love all the handmade homemade bits it's really special well we're wearing the same again Fran even turns the colour of our t-shirts underneath. Same colour coat, same Check colour trousers, same boots. <laughs> <laughs> I think we spend too long together. Anyway, we're on a lovely walk around uh, the fields around the village of Steeple Aston. Steeple Aston. It's about um, a mile from the canal, but we wanted to get off and have a little walk, and it's gorgeous. And we came across this. You can see it there. I think this really strange either a ruin or a folly in the middle of a field um, just on the edge of the village really I haven't got a clue what it is I'm gonna to have to do some research I did it. see some photographs of it when I was looking up about the village the village is beautiful really old village but I couldn't find out what that was but we've really now we've seen it we've really got to go back and investigate and let yeah, you know what it is it's really interesting so we haven't filmed much about uh, Steeple Aston um, but we're off tomorrow to uh, some gardens Ruffham Hall I think it is or Ruffham House uh, 17th century house, been in the same family forever apparently. 
So uh, looking forward to that, a nice walk around the gardens, but we can't take the dogs with us there, so we're going to have no. to leave them aboard the boat. Early morning, big walk, and then an afternoon, because I think there might be, is there a cafe there? Tea no, rooms? there's no tea rooms, no cafe there, no. Well, we'll still go. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> yeah, we're missing gardening, and uh, we'd love to go around other gardens and see what's what. It might be the wrong time of year, but hopefully they'll have some snowdrops and other winter plants. Hellebores can... and things should be up, yeah. shouldn't they? And even the the trees um, and the structure. Some gardens are really set up for winter. Could the fact that it's open all year round. Can you stop your dog from digging the farmer's crops up? Look at him. Archie. Oh, right, you hooligan. Here. <laughs> right, let's get going. Let's move on. So see you tomorrow. Rousham was built in around 1635 and then remodelled in the 18th century by William Kent who also designed the fantastic gardens and amazingly it's still in the hands of the same family after all these centuries. The structure we saw on the hill yesterday is actually a folly built by the family in the 18th century. Something for them to look at from their uh, drawing room window, I suppose. Well, we are in heaven now. We're in the walled uh, vegetable garden. Absolutely stunning. There's so much growing here still, even though it's the middle of winter. The sprouts behind us, fantastic. But these two areas, the walled garden and the uh, parterre area, which uh, with the low box hedging is absolutely stunning, isn't it? It's it really is. beautiful. Yeah. And it brings back memories of former days. We'd obviously never had a garden quite like this, but we had our allotments and used to garden for other people. And this is, this is we would love to have something like this in the future. I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, we've got but to win the lottery one first. One of those beds would be fine. <laughs> but there's still so much going on in the winter. I think we're going to come back again, aren't we? Yeah, we're going to catch the train, I think, from wherever we are. Come back in the spring and have a look. Because all the perennials are coming through, we can see the um, peonies and hemerocallis peeking up below the ground. And uh, I should imagine it is absolutely stunning in the spring and summer. So, and so much fruit come back. trees. If you come, if we come out and the fruit blossom is out, it'll be just amazing. So, we'll see what we can do. Depends how far we get. 
Let's yeah. go and have a look then. What's it you're looking Rainbow at? Charm. Rainbow charred. Rainbow charred. I don't know if you can see the colours just shining through. But I'm going to go and have a look. I've always grown that and it's a, a wonderful plant. I need to go and have a look. Perhaps if I speak nicely to the gardener, we might get you a can take fill away. your pockets. <laughs> Well, that's us for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Please go and check out our other videos if you haven't already. And we'll see you next time. We'll see you very soon. Cheers now. Bye. Bye.